guys, it's Jolene here. Welcome to my bedroom. This is a bedroom houseplant tour video and I can't wait to show you what kind of plants are in my bedroom. So right next to my bed, I have my Monsera elbow. It's sitting in a big pot. This pot is from the seal and the stand is from World Market. I actually get this whole set from Offer Up. This girl is like, oh, I'm moving and I don't want to bring this set. If you want, if you want it for, give me 20 bucks. And I'm like, this is amazing because this pot alone, I think it's like 70 or 100 bucks or something from the seal. And then the stand from World Market, they don't belong. They're not from the same company, but they actually look really cute together. I think I got a, I got a steal. What do you think? And then over here, uh, one of my favorite corner of the house, I have my Mascara Deliciosa, my uh, Raftafora de Cursava, my, I don't know, I don't remember the name. <laughs> and this is my uh, propagated plants, my Philodendron, Mycans or Mycans, whatever you like to call it. And also my another propagation, this is my Syndopsis Pictus Exotica. I started with two leaves and now it's just exploded in size. Uh, and I have three gold shelves. I don't have anything up there because it's quite dark up there, so I don't like to keep anything. And uh, yeah, I might, I might put, sometimes I put a book up there or a candle up there, but it's really hard to reach things. So I just leave it <laughs> for now. And you might see this fellow over here. This handsome little guy is called Plant Spectrum 32 Grow Lights. This Grow Lights was actually sent to me by Mother. Mother is a young Belgium company. They make all these really pretty uh, grow lights for houseplant enthusiasts like us and also for uh, growers for nurseries as well. This guy is sitting vertically on my uh, dresser. I really like how it's standing up because you see I have some large scale plants and especially this decursiva is quite tall. It's about two, it's about three feet tall I would say and this is the newest leaf. I absolutely love it. And uh, I've been propagating this guy but she already has new growth back here. Uh, you can see. One thing I love about this grow light is um, the housing of the light is not plastic. It's actually aluminum. So uh, when you use it for a while, you can touch the house and you'll realize it's slightly warm or a little bit hot. You might think, oh, it's overheating, but that's not the case. Because it's aluminum housing, the aluminum actually transfers the heat from the LED back to the housing. So it prolongs the life of the LED. It's way better than some cheap plastic that doesn't transfer the heat from the bulb. Uh, from the light so the aluminum housing really prevents your light from overheating and i want to show you what it looks like without the light in this corner quite a big difference huh um this grow light really mimics a full spectrum sunlight it's not just one or two particular uh, uh color and the assembling of the light is so simple. The light basically comes in three parts. The light itself and the base. The base, you basically just use a screw and to screw the base and the light together. And then the third part is just charger. You connect them together, boom, easy. Usually uh, the lights last about eight years, uh, around eight years. And uh, when the LED lights goes out, you can easily buy a new LED strip and then Get rid of this one, put the new one in. You don't have to get rid of the house. You don't have to buy a new house, a new base. Everything is recyclable, reusable. So it's really a grill light of a lifetime. Oh, by the way, this light comes with four year warranty. So if anything uh, goes wrong with the light, you can, within the four years, you can reach out to the customer support. They'll be able to help you. That is amazing. The next to my beautiful grow light, I have my Anthurium Vici I actually treated this plant about a month ago. When I first got this plant, it has four leaves and the, all these leaves are kind of damaged. I think maybe from uh, low humidity. And this is my newest leaf. Uh, it is so cute. I love it. So uh, the reason I have it back here instead of right next to the window is because 
I've owned a couple of VTI before and I realized they actually don't like full uh, light, too, too bright sunlight. So they actually prefer to stay in the shade and their leaves don't get damaged and they grow quite fast. That's why I put it back here. Uh, it's doing quite well and I think it's really happy. I move on to here. I have two plants over here. This one is Zipplianum. She is not very happy with me right now. I think this guy is suffering from uh, some sunburn. I had it over in that corner for a few months and I moved it back. I think it's gonna take a little while for it to be happy again. Uh, and then you might notice I have a little fungus gnat trap over here. I do have quite a gnat problem uh, because I use all organic soil. So I make sure I use a lot of orchid bark. Uh, they really, gnats really love them. So I have to have these stickers everywhere all over my house. I, some people use this LED flat trap thing. It's basically a little machine with LED lights on top. And then it's the same concept. You have this larger sticker at the bottom of the machine. So when the lights attract the fly into the machine and they get stuck on the, the bottom of this pad. And some people use mosquito bites to mix in the soil. I just find a trap to be the most effective and efficient way to get rid of gnats, even though they're not the most pretty. Uh, and the next to it, I have my whole Peperomia Hope. This is three times a charm. Uh, I think that's absolutely right because I've bought two Peperomia Hope before and then they all died. I think maybe from overwatering, I realize they're so tricky because they're not succulents and they're not really uh, like a philodendron. They don't like to have their soil completely dry, but they don't like to constantly be in moist soil. So it's really tricky. When I first bought it, it was only in a two inch pot. Now it's living happily in a six inch pot. <laughs> so coming into this corner, I have a bunch of plants here on my windowsill. Uh, the first one is my begonia, my special angel. This one is looking a bit sad. Don't feel sad for her because I've been taking a bunch of cuttings. So it's a very proud mother, grandmother, grand grandmother. <laughs> Next to her is my Hoya sunrise. I have it in Leica. Uh, it's because I realized Hoyas just tend to grow so much better in Leica. Just personal experience. <laughs> personal experience. I know a lot of uh, a lot of people grow Hoya in Coco Core and they do just fine. But I just find like a, to be the best soy alternative. And then now here I have my little potato. I got my, uh, this little caldex plant, Stephania erecta from Thailand a while ago. Now it's giving me two little, cute little leaf. I like it so much. Uh, and then next to the little caldex is my this is Ibonema bicolor. Um, I think I imported it from Thailand a while ago. It almost died. It actually did die, but I saved. I was able to save the base, and uh, it regenerated new leaves. It's really cute. It was all the hype. I think even a year ago, but now just nobody cares about it anymore. Uh, and this is my. I forgot the name. I forgot the name, but I bought it because the flower is just absolutely gorgeous. It's like a star-shaped flower. Here, I don't know how many of you guys remember. This was a birthday present from Josh. <laughs> he bought it for me, I think, two years ago, right, babe? Two years mm -hmm, ago. It was like two or three years. I think yeah. so, yeah. When he bought it, it was about this, this big, this long. And then it just exploded in size. Look how big it is. I'm pretty sure I need to repot it. This is very inhumane of me to keep such a big guy in such a tiny little pot. But yeah, I water it once a week and fertilize uh, this guy like any other houseplant. And it just grows so quick for me. Look at that. From, this guy grew from a cup to double these. <laughs> Within two years. Okay, so at the bottom row, I have my Hoya Carrii Variegata. This guy is <laughs> growing pretty weird looking because I see a lot of people's K 
carry I just they just kind of like they have space in between all the leaves they can climb but mine just kind of like grow in this cluster shape but I still think it's quite cute I have it in this corner and then I have my Hoya Microphylla uh, variegata look at how beautiful these yellow leaves are this is a completely different branch uh, from the main stem so I've had this plant for a while now, over a year uh, for about four or five months there's like this plant just went dormant this plant wasn't doing anything and then summer hits boom this this stem came out and every single leaf or yellow and that's what it looks like when it first come out it's like pink leaf with yellow vein it's just absolutely gorgeous uh, and i actually did a post on instagram asking you guys should i propagate this stem should i cut it off so everybody's like oh you don't don't cut it off because your plant can't survive without chlorophyll so thanks i did not cut it off uh, and then next to it is the Hoya Kamingiana. I love this plant because it reminds me of uh, eucalyptus and I love eucalyptus. And this guy is my, I have a little tap, Hoya Nicos, Nicosoniae. Uh, I, when, I ha when I first got it, it was a long strand. I wrapped it around the soil and then I used this pin to pin the stem down so hopefully this stem will grow arrow roots and uh, make the plant fuller this side is east facing so in the morning the sun is absolutely gorgeous in this corner i have my hoya bordeniae look at how strange looking this hoya is it's like a little flower every time i look at it it feels, reminds me of flower and guess what this one is ready for a bloom I'm so excited. Right next to this guy, I have my, um, well, when I bought it, it said Bella, but obviously this is not a Bella, but I still don't know the real name for this plant. It's, I'll just still call it a Hoya Bella. Uh, and then Hoya Linearis. I don't, it's, it's a really slow growing plant for me. I think I need to change soil for this guy. I haven't changed it for about a year over a year so very pretty and then next to my linearis i have my globulosa globulosa yeah hoya globulosa i had it in my greenhouse for a while and this new leaf popped out in my greenhouse so i i think i should probably put it back to the greenhouse for more humidity and this guy is hoya sigillata all of my hoyas are from unsolicited plants planttalks.com uh, most of the times their plants or hoyas are sold out so you can contact the owner online on instagram to dm her to find out when it's restock what she has available that's not listed so that's that and then right here i just have my um simple blue propagation i have my mother plant in the living room as well and down here i have my syngonium uh, I just push it in the corner because I don't know. I don't particularly like that plant very much, so I kind of just like leave it over there, and it's growing just fine. And here I have my Hoya acuta variegata. This pink one, these pink marks, I think they're from uh, Sandstress. And then because the new leaves, hi baby, hi Finn, you wanna say hi? Um, so. Yeah, the new leaves are all pink and then they become yellow as they get bigger. Yeah, this is uh, Fanny's favorite spot. He will wake up in the morning, he sits here and he monitors everybody. He, especially because the pool is down there. So he always barks at the people in the pool. And then over here is my Hoya Acroniana Silver. I did the same as I, as I did the same thing. I received a strand. Uh, just one little strand. I wrapped it around on top of the layer on top of the soil and a lot of um, the nose has already rooted This one I don't know how to say the name uh, But I first saw this on Instagram. I was uh, completely amazed 
they're just so beautiful. Uh, when they're sun stressed, the leaves are pink, turn into this beautiful baby pink, and I just love it. Oh yeah, obovada variegata. Um, these are all sun stressed marks, but this new stem is not variegated, but that's fine. Just like my microphylla, uh, it's just normal variegation, and then and the new stem gives me all yellow yellow leaves, so you can't really anticipate variegation. Um, and then in this corner, I have the Peperomia raindrop. Uh, a lot of you guys need to Mickey's, and Mickey have some not for sale plants behind their cash register. Uh, and then I saw they have a beautiful pepper, Peperomia raindrop with a woody stem. Uh, and then I was like, I want one of those. So I bought this guy, and I hopefully someday my. Um, this, this stand, this bigger and older stand will become woody and then maybe the bottom leaf will start to fall off and then this guy will just grow into a little tree. I don't know how many of you guys know what I'm talking about, if, but if you know, you know. So she's got the best spot of the house. And then move on to this little corner. I'll talk about these hanging plants after. So here I have my uh, philodendron Florida ghost. So this plant used to be such a full pot. I have like 13 leaves, but now I only have three because I realized my uh, leaves are starting to lose variegation the more leaves I have. So I cut them all off and this is the newest leaf and you can see, boom, boom, the variegation is back. So this is a previous leaf. It was just all completely green. All of my other leaves are completely green. And now you can see kind of like the white and then green like minty looking leaf so um and that's also what's being recommended if you want to have your variegation back especially your pink princess if you start to have um completely green leaf or completely pink leaf what you can do is cut it off and it will just kind of like reset the plant um to encourage more variegation and then next to my ghost is my variegated elephant ear. I, I think allocation is such a hard genus of plants. I just can't have a full pot of plants because every time a new leaf comes out, the old leaf die. Maybe it's just me, maybe it's a lot of people. I don't know, I talked to a lot of people and a lot of people agree with me, but I, I think they're just so pretty. I just love the variegation and this plant is so trendy, so popular right now. And they're going for pretty expensive. I'll say this size, they're going for about 60 to 120, 150. I don't know, they're pretty crazy, the prices. Uh, this guy is just growing like crazy. I just recently transferred it from Lekka to soil. And uh, look at the variegation, look at this half and half. I love it, it's very pretty. Not much to say about this guy. Um, I just never had to worry about her. The roots are absolutely so healthy and thick. I just love looking at the roots. That's why I put it in this transparent pot. I need to water this guy. I need to water all of them. Sunday is usually my watering day, but I'm filming right now. So I'm gonna water them right after filming. Okay, let's move on to the hanging plants. Here I have uh, my Anthurium vitellifolium. Uh, and this guy is blooming. Maybe I'll be able to, you know, take seeds or something. I've never done it before. Uh, this guy was an imported plant. And uh, I thought it was gonna die, but I transferred it from soil to water to lycra to soil again to moss, and eventually it lived in moss. I was super stressed out, but thank God it lived in sphagnum moss. And now, after month and month um, of adapting in mouth, I eventually transferred it into very loose soil, and I think it loves it because it's blooming. Oh, that's that guy. And then this one is my other Hoya. Sorry, I don't remember the name of it, but I just love the leaf. It looks like beautiful sky with amazing silver star. Uh, and this guy's also cool, blooming. Look, there's one, there is one, and there is one. I hope they all bloom for me. Hoyas are they are pretty finicky. Sometimes they will drop 
their flower just right before they bloom. So I'm not gonna you know, have too much expectations. <laughs> Sometimes they have so many blue, so many like buds, but none of them bloom. So, uh, and this is Hoya fishtail. I've been propagating this little guy for a while and uh, it is a pretty fast grower, I'll say. And then next to my fishtail is Carnosa compacta variegata. It's also a Hoya. I'll show you guys the front part. I think it is really a pretty fast growing plant for me, I'll say. It's like this branch. <laughs> because it's too much white and not enough chlorophyll and this plant, this part just looks pretty but it doesn't really do anything <gasps> it's not the worker bee, these are the worker bees this is just a queen <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, that's it, not much to talk about it it's not, it doesn't require a lot of PLC just water once a week and then fertilize twice a month during growing season that's it and then move on to this part of the room. That's just a propagated plant. Uh, Try to scan shot over here. Over here, I have a, a little dresser we bought from Ikea in, in this corner. Because this apartment is not very big, we don't have a lot of storage place. So we just bought a temporary uh, closet. And then on top of the closet, I just have my fishtail cactus or shark tooth cactus. It's a lot of common name for this plant. Uh, when I first, I think when I first put it up there, it only had like this much growth. You can see like the darker green with the older growth and it is um, very soft and light green part. Those are new growth. The sky is a pretty fast grower. I don't really water it much, probably once every two weeks. And then I don't fertilize it that much. It doesn't get a whole lot of sun, but it's doing really well because there are um, uh, epiphytus. So it doesn't really require so much water in the roots. It's as long as your environment is humid and they usually grow really fast. I have my humidifier over here. My house humidity is usually around 60%. Also, um, LA is not that dry this year, surprisingly. Our humidity remains around 55 to 65. So I don't have my humidity, humidity, humidifier running all summer, actually, surprisingly. And this year, I would say it's not really hot during summer. So um, I'm really happy. And that's all the plants in the bedroom. All right, guys, that's everything in my bedroom. Uh, I have a lot more plants in my living room, uh, but uh, I'm not gonna film the living room today because we're preparing for the move and the living room and kitchen is pretty messy. So I might film the living room next week. We'll do one room at a time, okay? And by the way, if you're interested in my grow light, this is Plant Spectrum 32 from Mother. Absolutely love the grow light, love the design of it. It makes this corner feels very um, bright and at the same time stylish. I think this grow light fits in the decor of my home and it will also fit in the decor of my uh, new house. I'm really excited to move with this grow light. All right, thanks for watching guys and stay tuned for more videos. I say bye, Fanny.